Scott Tucker, PhD in Maritime Archaeology for the University of Southampton, but you all know him. So, here we go. Now, uh, so I'm going to talk to you about my ongoing project in uh, the Chesapeake region. Um, it's in the St. Mary's River, uh, and it's uh, of course, through University of Southampton, Institute for Maritime History, Maryland Maritime Archaeological Program, and Historic St. Mary's City, uh, funded by L.C. Harper Charitable Foundation, although, to be fair, everybody's kicked in a bit of money. Um, so, right, to get right into it. First off, where I'm at. Uh, Chesapeake is this bay on the eastern shore of the U.S., um, roughly there. Um, the area I'm actually working at is right here in the St. Mary's River. Uh, this was the 17th century uh, colonial uh, home of Maryland. This is the first colony uh, formed in Maryland. And of course we have Jamestown in 1607, which is uh, right about down here. So all of these, or both colonies heavily engaged in the tobacco trade, existed basically for the sole purpose of uh, tobacco economy. Um, and the site that I'm working on, uh, I was approached uh, about two years ago, asked to work on this. Um, I was told that there is a ballast distribution in the river that had been found in 1990, uh, 1994. Um, it's just off the current shoreline. Um, and a minimal amount of work had been done on it before, enough to suggest a 17th century date on it. Uh, if it is 17th century, this will be the oldest ship remains known in the region, um, and quite possibly all, uh, oldest from British North America. Um, so, yeah, you can uh, mention tobacco already um, being hugely important. Um, so our site is uh, we have an 1858, or, I'm sorry, 1853 shoreline here. Um, throughout this uh, 1850s and 1950s, the shoreline really didn't, I'm sorry, the 17th century and the 1850s, the shoreline hadn't really changed. Uh, <coughs> you can see our sites roughly right against the ancient shoreline. Um, right, so, as mentioned, discovered in 94, uh, it's about 18 meters by 6 meters, give or take, uh, the ovular distribution of stones. Um, so it's a rough shape there. And this was the profile in, I think this was done in 98. Um, so you can see we had a very obvious shoreline. Um, today that doesn't really exist. I don't know how much it did uh, 14 years ago either. But I think it's been kind of trolled down by the oyster dredgers as they're going more heavily over this area, uh, which is one of our main concerns. Um, as mentioned, there were artifacts suggesting 17th century dates. Um, so in the one meter test pit that was dug out to a, a depth of half a meter, um, 58 European ballast stones. I have yet to see any samples of that, unfortunately. Um, two white clay pipe stems and three Dutch red sugar bricks, which are a very rare artifact uh, for this region. Uh, a sugar brick, a Dutch red sugar brick is a lot like a Dutch yellow brick. It's small, uh, more of a paving stone used frequently in parts. Um, and it, it just doesn't pop up that often. Um, those are some of the artifacts. So as you can see, they're, they're, these are broken bits, but they're not very broken. And these are two pipe stems. I think they were 8 sixty-fourths. One was 8 and one was 7 sixty-fourths inch, uh, which puts them roughly uh, 1650 to 1670 or 80. Um, although you need a lot more than two to pull it off the pipe stems. Um, so anyway, based on what we have, um, sorry for the wordy slide, uh, pretty sure that this is not just a dump of ballast. Um, one, there's not much of a reason to be doing this. This is right up against the town center. 
wasn't much commerce, or there wasn't much tobacco being loaded onto a ship in the town center. Um, the plantations were sort of scattered all over the area, and ships would come in to each plantation, pick up their goods, and go on to the next. So there's really no reason to de-ballast right there. The shape also suggests <coughs> a ship. Um, so it's probably the lower hull of an abandoned craft. And as for size, it's you know, 70 to maybe 100 ton, uh, based on uh, the dimensions of it, which is a bit small for a tobacco ship. The average boat was 120 tons, uh, larger coming out of uh, London. But it's also very big for a coastal trader. So um, once we get down into the ballast, uh, if it is indeed European, it's going to tell us a lot more about where the ship came from and why it's there. Uh, so 2011, um, I went out with uh, researchers from the Institute for Maritime History. Actually, no, I went out first uh, by myself diving the river, so I wanted to see what was there in its current state. And um, diver searches were not able to find the site, uh, but we'll, you'll see why in a minute. Um, side scan sonar was attempted over the, that summer, and we did locate an anomaly in the area that it was said to be. Um, but when we did the site, we weren't able to really make much of a sighting of it aside from finding a couple of uh, Dutch brick. Here's our side scan image. Um, what we have is a very faint outline, or very faint signature right in that area, um, which indicates a very deposit of stone as one interpretation. So, um, we went back out this past summer and uh, went out uh, just doing diver searches again, trying to locate the sites. Um, there had been a hurricane the previous fall, so we were hoping that maybe that had left a bit of it uncovered, um, that we might be able to really do something. Unfortunately, it wasn't. Um, and our, our main goal is to get this site mapped in, get its geospatial coordinates really tight, so uh, just jumping through hoops to get to the next season of field work and get to do some excavation, hopefully. Um, and aside from that, assessing the site for uh, anything that might be um, going on with it, uh, the oyster dredgers being the main threat. Um, and just the general search for exposed artifacts, uh, trying to get a better datum for it. Um, so we set datum points on the beach using an RTK, uh, which we tried previously using total station, shooting down a heavily wooded cliff to the beach that didn't work, plus somebody pulled one of our survey markers. Um, and yeah, then went out and did our diver searches. We finally, after three days, came across a concentration of uh, handmade bricks from the colonial period. Uh, many of them were this small Dutch size. And then we found some cobbles, uh, <coughs> which I can't say are the European flint that I was hoping for. They're, uh, the ones we raised are quartz sites. Um, Although it doesn't look to be a local port site, so I'm still waiting for analysis on that. Um, and yeah, still couldn't find the real distribution of ballast. Um, so here's just some of the artifacts that are not really coming up cobbles, bricks, um, 